Who was Magnus Fortemann, and why did 700 Frisians conquer the city of Rome in the 9th century? Well, in today's video, let's find out. Now I can tell there are going to be many people raging at this, saying the Frisians never conquered Rome, what do you want about, this is some pseudo-Frisian theory, Hilbert, you've completely lost it. And while the latter statement is definitely true, and has been for some time, let me clarify, this is based on a saga account. So many of the things in this video that I'm going to be talking about probably aren't going to be 100% historically accurate, although they might recall some historical events that were true, but that have been spun in later years to make the story embellished and to make it more interesting. This is probably because of the time in which it was written or embellished. This was the 15th century. They were trying to defend something in Friesland, in Frisia, that was called the Frieske Freiheit. And this basically meant the Frisian freedom. This was because in the lands around Frisia during the Middle Ages, the feudal system was in place. Whereas in Frisia, a different system was working as op in opposition to the other systems around it at the time. This basically meant that there were no feudal overlords. And this is called the Frisian freedom. Now, in the time that they were writing these accounts, they were trying to defend this Frisian freedom both physically through fighting as well as by trying to justify why the Frisian freedom exists and this is where the story comes in. Now, the story starts in the time of Charlemagne. The Frisians had been an independent people around the time but they had then been conquered by the Franks and incorporated into the Frankish Empire. Now, it's around the turn of the 9th century that Pope Leo, the Pope in Rome, was actually ousted by the the nobles. They put out his eyes and cast him out of the city. But of course, Charlemagne, as the main defender of Christianity, couldn't stand idly by while the vicar of Christ on earth was handled in such a way. And so he marched with an army to the city of Rome to sort this out. Now, in this army, there were 700 Frisians. And these Frisians were paying their duties as a conquered people to the Franks. They had to then serve in the Frankish army. And the leader of the Frisians on this expedition to Rome was called Magnus Fortemann. And he is uh, said to be the first of these uh, potentates, they're called. So the leader of the army in Frisia under Frankish control, a Frisian himself. Now, they spearhead the attack into Rome. And those 700 Frisians bravely go into the city and wipe out the opposition. And this, of course, means that the Pope and Charlemagne are very thankful to Magnus Fortemann and the Frisians, and they offer him all sorts of titles and riches. Uh, but he says that he doesn't want any of the titles or the riches. They can keep them all. But what he does want is the promise of freedom for his people, for the Frisian people, that they can have a special place in the Frankish Empire, that they are only loyal to the emperor and to no one else. And this is why in later years, they never came under the feudal system, and this is what became known as the Frieske Freiheit, or the Frisian Freedom. Now, the reason I'm making this video is because my favourite band, a Frisian band called Baldus Traumar, are releasing a new album, and the album, as you can see, is called Magnus, and follows the events that I have just described, these pseudo-historical, legendary events of the Frisians that went to Rome. This possibly happened, there, there quite possibly were Frisians in the army that captured Rome, but as you can tell, the story's probably been embellished quite a lot by later Frisian authors to give them a central position in this. Nonetheless, they are releasing an album, and its release date is very soon. It's on the 23rd of November, and they asked me to review the album. So I've actually listened to it. I was a fan of the band already, which you can probably tell from my review. It's rather positive. But I was hoping that I would read it out for you and that you would make up your own mind and hopefully give it a listen. And if you like it, listen to some more of their things. There's also going to be a concert in Dockham that I will actually be attending. It's on the 21st of December in the Nosehorn in Dockham. So if you're there and you happen to bump into me then please say hello we can go out for a drink afterwards might be fun so here's my review of the album i actually even made another video about Baldur's Traumar uh, two years ago when their uh, previous album their acoustic album came out von frieslands for lena and i even have the little figures that i made of the band back then Machnus sees the return of Frisian band Baldur's Draumar to their folk metal roots for the first time since Ortgil Sorn in 2015, following the release of their first acoustic album, Von Frieslands for Linne, two years ago. The band's new release thrusts the listener back to the untamed world of 9th century Frisia and tells of the legendary exploits of Machnus Fortemann and the Frisians of his day. 
The Dark Age hero in question is not only being remembered through the words music of Baldur's Draumar, but also on the pages of a new comic book following his journey from Frisia to Rome and back again. Both are being released on the 23rd of November. With a track listing of nine songs, Mochnes is a carefully polished collection of the band's freshest material, including styles both old and new, and doesn't suffer from the inclusion of filler tracks as is the case with many concept albums. Friso kicks off the album as it means to go on, dark but with rich melodic undertones and a surging chorus line driven home with Steichstra's powerful performance incorporating a range of vocal styles. The following track is no less a headbanger. Toald and Farner's catchy choruses and crunchy verse illuminates in a solo that is as much folk as it is metal, the style reminiscent of the previous hits of Volvatid and T and Tuner from Art Gillesson. Its lyrics incorporate not only well-crafted rhymes, but also the front rhyme alliteration used in the poetry of the North Sea Germanic peoples of the time. The next songs of Slochmada Saxum and Verblina Verbala take the historic connection a step further, with old Frisian and Latin lyrics sliding between explosive riffs and longer choral infused verses. Of Slochmada Saxum has echoes of the band's older Viking metal roots, with heavier use of synth and traditional instruments to create a power ballad halfway through the album. <laughs> In contrast to Puarten von Roma, is melodic, heavy and catchy in equal measure from start to finish. The following track, Frei, will undoubtedly go down as one of the highlights of Machnes. A fast-paced medley of electric guitars, bass, percussion and accordion lay the foundations for an equally well-crafted lyric, describing Frisian freedom in a song that should be added among the best ever recorded by the band. <laughs> The album's namesake track, Machnes Fortemann, has all the crashing epic energy expected from the finale of an album, found especially in the final chorus before the acoustic bridge and again in the well-built-up outro. While both Frey and Magnus Fortemann contain elements of the band's previous crisp acoustic sound, there is no detraction from the furious pace pursued throughout the album, the aforementioned songs nonetheless hitting hard in classic Baldur Straumar style. <laughs> Upstalus Bayem combines both the slower, crashing build-up with a combination of dramatic synth and threatening brass, as well as a swinging, folk-infused chorus and instrumental that is bound to continue ringing in the listener's ears long before the final note has fallen silent. <laughs> The album culminates with Ela Freya Fresena, a blast from the past from the band's debut EP, Nuarze Germanen, showcasing just how far their style has come in terms of musicianship and production.
all in all, the album is a fast-paced, explosive experience, the majority of its songs clocking in around the four to five minute mark. Machnus should serve both to thrill existing fans as well as entice new listeners to the band's growing support base in both the Netherlands and elsewhere with their fusion of history, languages and great music. I'm sure I won't be alone in saying that the return of the metal style of Art Gilles Sorn and the incorporation of new techniques has left me very excited for the album's full release on the 23rd and curious about what's next on the horizon for the expanding discography of Baldur's Draumar. So if you couldn't tell, I'm very excited for this album to come out, and I hope that you'll all go and give it a listen. There's also, as I mentioned, a comic book coming out about Machnus, which looks really good as well, so have a look for that in any Frisian bookstore. It is in Frisian, I'm not sure if there'll be translations at any point into any other languages, but I'd still highly recommend having a look at it and having a listen to some of the songs in the album, or some of the other albums uh, by Baldur's Traumar, if that's your kind of thing. And if it's not, then I appreciate you sticking around to the end, and uh, I'll see you again on Friday for some more normal history videos so i have been hilbert and this has been the history today do check out there'll be links in the description below and other things and i will see you all again very soon